Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at the M2 Pro chip, which I'm currently using in my MacBook Pro 14 inch with 12 CPU cores, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 19 GPU cores. Today we're going to be testing out a whole bunch of different games running on my MacBook Pro. We'll be looking at native ARM games as well as games running through the Rosetta 2 translation layer. We'll be comparing AAA titles against indie games. We'll also have a look at how Windows games can run on the Apple Silicon Mac. And we're also going to be looking at how high-end game emulation is going to work on the M2 Pro. So make sure you watch until the end of the video to see how it performs. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So the first game that we're going to be looking at is Resident Evil Village. We are running this at 2560 by 1440p resolution and we have Metal FX scaling set to quality mode and all the other settings set onto default. So if you didn't already know Resident Evil Village is the first game to make use of Metal 3 which is the new graphics API from Apple and one of the features we're testing today is Metal FX upscaling which has a lot of similarities with something like AMD's FSR or Nvidia's DLSS. It allows the game to run at a lower resolution and then to use AI upscaling in order to produce produce a sharp image and the idea behind it is that it improves the game performance substantially with minimal loss in image quality. Now Resident Evil Village there are two modes that you can choose from. You can choose between performance and quality modes for upscaling. Previously I've compared Metal FX on the original M1 Apple Silicon Mac and the results are very impressive especially the quality mode which visually looks very similar to the native renderer but at a substantially better frame rate. And now we're testing out Metal FX quality mode at 1440p on the M2 Pro. As you can see here we're easily hitting the 70 to 80 FPS mark which means that we're getting a really smooth performance on this particular laptop and when we go into interior areas the frame rate is about 80 to 85 FPS which is not too bad. If you really wanted higher frame rates to take advantage of the 120Hz ProMotion display on the MacBook Pros, then you could easily turn the Metal Effects renderer onto performance mode and you could also lower the resolution and quality a little bit and you get much closer to that 120Hz frame rate. Anyway, this game runs fantastically on the M2 Pro and it really bodes well for future AAA titles that are going to take advantage of Metal 3, such as the long-awaited game No Man's Sky as well as the racing game Grid Legends, which are due to get native R macOS ports later this year. So next up we are testing out the game Metro Exodus at 1440p at the ultra quality preset. So the macOS port of this game is Intel based. This means that it was designed for the x86 CPU architecture and in order for this game to run on Apple Silicon hardware it needs to take advantage of the Rosetta 2 translation layer which translates x86 commands into ARM64 commands on the fly. And this can introduce a performance hit compared to if the game was actually designed for the ARM64 CPU architecture. However graphically intensive games like this are really limited by the number of GPU cores. So here in these interior areas we're getting a very respectable 65 to 70 fps and during intensive action sequences this might dip all the way down to 50 fps however this is pretty impressive considering that this is a rosetta 2 game running on the ultra graphics quality preset at a relatively high resolution of 1440p so metro exodus remains one of the best looking first person shooters on apple silicon mac and you're going to get a decent experience whether using the original m1 mac or whether you decide to upgrade to the m2 pro Speaking of first person shooters on the Mac, we're now going to look at the game Proteus. Here we're running at 1440p at pretty much max settings. So if you've not heard of Proteus before, this is a retro themed shooter which shares a lot of its DNA with games like Doom and Quake. It has a cool retro aesthetic and very fast old school gameplay. It is also one of the few games that has actually native ARM, which means that no translation layer is required and it runs great on the M2 Pro, consistently hitting at around 90 to 100 plus FPS, even with all the enemies effects and gore flying around the screen all at once. Given that Doom and Doom Eternal aren't available on macOS, a game like Proteus is pretty much the next best thing. And it's a real worthy addition to the Mac gaming library and it runs fantastically on the M2 Pro. So next up is the game Hitman from 2016. So a lot of people don't know that this received a macOS port that actually runs great on Apple Silicon Macs. Yes, it is the Intel build of a game and it's not necessarily optimized that well for the Mac. However, unfortunately, Mac versions were never released for Hitman 2 or 3. So therefore, if you want to get your Hitman fixed, then the 2016 Mac port is going to be the way to go. So we're running at 1440p at medium settings. So here we're getting a frame rate of about 65 to 85 FPS. 
which is pretty good considering how many characters are on screen at once. In interior sections where there's just one character at a time, this can go as high as say 100 to 120 FPS. So make sure not to sleep on this game. It's the latest version of Hitman that you can play on a Mac and it seems to run quite nicely on the M2 Pro. So next up is the game The Witcher 3. This of course is a Windows only title I'm afraid and therefore in order to get this to run we are using the translation layer called Crossover which is a software that takes advantage of something called Wine which translates Windows graphics API calls into macOS compatible graphics API calls. Here again we are running the game at 1440p and we are using the high graphics preset. However the main thing is that we have Nvidia Hairworks turned off otherwise the game will crash. So running at 1440p on high is pretty taxing on the system. We're only getting around 30 to 35 fps. There's also some stuttering which is caused by shader compilation which is not necessarily that bad, especially considering that this is still an Intel game being translated via Rosetta 2 and that we have all of this translation happening in the background to get a Windows game working on a Mac. If you did want to get a smoother frame rate, then all you have to do is to turn down the resolution to 1080p and we're going to hit something like 45 FPS consistently. If you want to find out how to get The Witcher 3 or any other Windows game working on Apple Silicon hardware, then please make sure to check the link in the description for my video tutorial. So next up is the game Grand Theft Auto 5. So this is another Windows game that we're running through the crossover translation layer. We've selected DirectX 10 and 1440p at the default graphics settings. Performance at the resolution of 1440p is actually not too bad, running anywhere from 65 to 85 FPS. And this is pretty consistent even through action scenes and also in full on open world racing gameplay. So Crossover 22.0.1 Beta, which is the version of Crossover that I'm using at the time of recording, seems to run GTA 5 pretty well. It's definitely a marked improvement over previous versions of Crossover, which had a lot more stuttering and graphical issues. So anyway, I'm glad that this works pretty well on the MT Pro, especially because every time I do a benchmark video, tons of people ask me to run GTA 5 and it seems to run fine. So the next game is the original Subnautica. So this is the open world survival crafting game. And despite the fact that this is quite an old 2014 game, the performance on Mac is not fantastic. So here we're running on the low graphics preset at 1440p. And here I'm forced to do that because we are actually running OpenGL on this particular game. So I'm not able to use the Metal Graphics HUD, which I've used in other games in this video to show the frame rate of the Metal Graphics API. Instead, I'm using the Steam Overlay Counter. And despite all of the GPU power behind the M2 Pro, because the game uses OpenGL, this isn't well supported on Apple Silicon hardware, which actually began phasing out the use of OpenGL back in macOS Mojave 10.14. So therefore at 1440p we're only hitting around 50 to 65 FPS which is a real shame. However by turning down the settings to low we're still getting a very playable frame rate. And speaking of OpenGL we have a title which needs no introduction, this is Counter-Strike Global Offensive, otherwise known as CSGO. And despite the fact that this is probably one of the most popular games on Steam at the moment, and it's probably the most popular Mac multiplayer game, this title's performance is basically crippled by its reliance on the OpenGL graphics API, which gives the game relatively terrible performance, especially given the price of the new MacBook Pros. So here we're running at 1440p and I've turned all the settings down to low in order to increase our competitive advantage. So just be aware I haven't played Counter-Strike for a really long time so you're going to see some really terrible gameplay. So yes the answer is that you can play CSGO on the M2 Pro and we can get frame rates of around 90 to 110 FPS. However the experience is not necessarily going to be that great. What I found is that it feels like there's a little bit of latency when actually playing the game and that there are several bugs especially with command tabbing out which seem to cause the game to crash occasionally. So despite the game's popularity it's a real shame that we're not able to get something better than OpenGL and at this stage it's very unlikely that things are going to improve especially considering the age of the original source engine of this game. So speaking of very popular online multiplayer games with questionable Mac ports, here we have the game Dota 2. So we're running the game at the second graphics preset at 1440p. This makes use of the Vulkan graphics API, but it's actually using Molten VK, which translates Vulkan into Metal, which is the native Apple renderer. 
So the good news is that this game is perfectly capable of reaching the maximum screen refresh rate of 120Hz. Despite the fact that we're on the second graphics preset, I'm sure if I turned it to the first graphics preset, things will look a little bit blurrier but will have even higher frame rates. So obviously this is very important in a competitive game like this where every frame counts. So I did notice that during some team fights, the frame rate can drop to as low as about 65fps. And if we really wanted a more solid, higher frame rate, then we just turn some of the settings down and use a slightly lower resolution and we should be fine. So next up is the game Beyond a Steel Sky. So this is a sequel to the classic adventure game Beneath a Steel Sky, originally released in 1994. So I tried running this game on the default high setting and at 1440p it was getting a disappointing 40 FPS. So I tweaked some of the graphical settings down from high to medium and now we're getting an FPS of about 55 to 60. And to be honest, I couldn't really tell a difference in the level of graphical quality. So Beyond the Steel Sky received a native ARM update back in 2021 and seems to perform okay on the M2 Pro. So the only way to play this game on a Mac is gonna be through the Apple Arcade subscription service, which has a surprising amount of games that are compatible on Apple Silicon Macs. So next up is another Apple Arcade title, NBA 2K23. So this game was really designed with Apple mobile devices in mind. We do have a graphics menu setting where I can tweak the resolution, but I can't seem to get it to 2560 by 1440. Well, for what I've done is I've left all the other settings on at ultra high, and we'll be testing how this game works at 1080p. So at 1080p, the game is running really well, maxing out its frame rate at 120 FPS. And despite the fact that this is the mobile arcade version of the game, and it lacks some of the features of its console counterparts, it's a seriously good looking game nevertheless. The animations are really solid, the detail levels on the faces are very good, we have some interesting effects, for example, the reflections on the court and things like lighting on the skin look very realistic. So I played a little bit of this game and it didn't seem to drop under 120Hz even on max settings at 1080p. It's a shame that I can't seem to test this at 1440p. This is definitely one of the best looking and best performing games that you can play on the MT Pro. So next up is the action comedy platforming game Psychonauts 2. So this is a double fine game that's also being published by Microsoft. So here I'm running at 1440p at the high graphics setting. Interestingly, the game automatically applies a resolution scale of just 65%. This probably helps with maintaining a solid frame rate whilst allowing the game to still look pretty good. So if you've never played either of these games before, I definitely highly recommend it. The series is known for its writing, its comedy, its humor, and also its action platforming as well. Artistically, it's one of the more wacky and creative games that you can play on a Mac, so I definitely recommend that you try this one out. In terms of performance, the game is pretty solid, running at around 50-60 FPS. However, there are the occasional pretty big stutters, which thankfully aren't that common throughout this game. So definitely highly recommend it on the Mac, and runs mostly great on the M2 Pro. So the next game is Fire Emblem Three Houses. So this is obviously not a macOS native title, but it is being emulated natively using a Switch emulator called Ryujinx. The macOS port of this emulator released only a few months ago, and it's pretty damn amazing how many games that it can run almost without any issues at all. If you want to find out more about Nintendo Switch emulation and my tutorial, then please make sure to follow the link in the description. So I'm running the game at the 1x native resolution because I'm trying to hit 65 frames per second. Now the game is normally locked to 30 FPS on the Switch, but you can unlock the FPS on Ryujinx by clicking on the V-Sync button on the bottom left hand side of the screen. And once V-Sync is unselected, then you can run this game at 60 FPS. So this game is pretty much running very admirably, hitting that frame rate cap. And this is pretty amazing as this is the very first version and first release of Ryujinx on the Mac. And it's pretty cool that games like Fire Emblem Three Houses pretty much works out of the box. So there is the other aspect of the game, which is this kind of visual novel tacked onto the tactical RPG side, where you get to explore a 3D world. And this sometimes dips to about 55 FPS, it's not consistently hitting 60. However, I think that this is probably acceptable if you wanted to guarantee 60 FPS, you could always use the internal resolution scale to turn it down even more. So next up, we're looking at Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. Now this is once again, a Nintendo Switch game being emulated through Ryujinx. And it's also one of the most recent games that have been released, which works fantastically on Ryujinx on Mac, even on the M2 Pro. So again, this is a game that defaults at 30 FPS, but there is a cheat which you can load into the 
game to make it run at 60 FPS. And if you want smoother, less stuttery gameplay, then what you can do is also download a shader cache through something called Ryusak, which I definitely recommend doing. If you want to find out how to do this, then please make sure to check the video in the description for my tutorial. So as you can see at 1x the native resolution, we're hitting pretty much 60 FPS the entire time. I did try doubling the native resolution, but this caused a lot more stutter than normal. However, I think this looks pretty great as a 1x native resolution, especially considering that this game is being emulated and it's also such a recent game release as well. So the last game on the list is Minecraft. So we're running this at 1440p. We're using Sodium and Iris shaders. We're running a render distance of 18 chunks and most of the other settings are set to default. And with no shaders loaded, we're getting around 200 to 300 or so FPS, which is definitely very decent. However, this is not really a good test of Minecraft. After all, most people add a lot of mods to the game and also shaders as well, so this is what we're going to do. Here we're loading up Silda's Vibrant Shaders 1.5 High, and although we have a pretty substantial drop in frame rate to around 45 to 55 FPS, consider that this is one of the higher end shaders and also that we're running at 1440p. It's almost always worth running some kind of shader, maybe you can choose a lower end shader if you want to get more frame rate. As you can see, the look of the game vastly improves with shaders like this. If you want to find out how to install Minecraft on native ARM, using shaders and Prism Launcher, and also getting some mods like Pixelmon working on Minecraft, then please make sure to check the link in the description for a future tutorial video. So anyway, this has been my look at gaming on the M2 Pro. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.